Alan. <clears throat> Hi, Vicky. Vicky Hi, Vicky. Hi, everybody. <laughs> the Queen of Routing. Um, I'm gonna run your uh, run your presentation, and you were gonna talk over it. Is that correct? Exactly. Oh, you opened it the wrong way. Here we go. So we're going to share that video this way. PD routing video. There it is. You can see it. Hi, everybody. So today we're going to talk about a practical example of PU routing. And it's an example that comes from the a workshop from PG routing. So everybody knows that PG routing is like to find the shortest path, the shortest distance, but everything goes into context. So not always that is um, the solution, the straight line, but PG routing can be used for many things. One thing that I feel that it's very important is that when you work in a project, you need to think that you are going to do something for humanity. Uh, sometimes it happens that your project is used for not very good things. So in the PG routing workshop, we have um, three examples of uh, PE routing being used to solve uh, three of the sustainable goals from the UN. We're going to talk about the good health and well-being. And the problem we're going to try to solve is to estimate the number of dependent people living near the hospital for better planning. Uh, this problem arose during the pandemic, uh, the idea was uh, to have some places that to locate temporary hospitals. And for this solution, in this uh, presentation, we're going to use remote.osu.org. If you want to try it out, please, and you don't have an OSU ID, please contact us, contact me. Um, the, the username for the desktop is user and the password is user. But you need to log in with your OSU ID to come to this screen where you get user as user and the password you're typing, it's user. Once you are in the desktop, we're going to learn how to use it. There's going to be a menu down there. Uh, please do not upgrade. And you're going to be choosing the terminal. We're going to be using terminal. Um, PG admin is not installed in the ISO. It will be installed in the DMDK. And we appreciate all the efforts done by the OSU Live team to have this um, ISO, this um, operative system ready. And we thank also Regina to for all the setup that she has done. So, we're going to be following the workshop. And the first thing we're going to be doing is to create the Mumbai database. This is going to be done with some approximations, wild approximations, I would think. But if you are in the government or you have access to some census data, of course, the results are going to be much better. This is just an estimation. So we're going to create the extension PG routing with the cascade so that Postgis gets installed. And we're going to also create uh, the extension HStore. 
because we're going to be using OSM to PG routing to import data. The data that we're going to be importing are roads, and we're going to be using OSM to PG routing also to import buildings. OSM to PG routing imports everything as a line string. Okay, so these buildings are not going to be polygons. They're going to be line strings. So we exit the database and we go to the PG routing workshop. That's what we are going to cover. So we are installing Mumbai database. You can go to the PE routing workshop. In this is all happening all inside the remote, so that I can you can copy paste from the website all the instructions. Um, so there is going to be the copy, and we're going to copy that and paste it on the terminal. So there it happens. Well, what I had in the slide was like a, the shortcut of all that. So you're, you're basically using remote as your own computer, but it's on the website, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's... Maybe I should have done, done it faster. Anyway, I'm going slow. I'm been a, I, I was a professor in the university, so I like to go kind of slow so that we all see what is happening. So the copy, the paste, And that's too slow. You always get that uh, screen of paste. Yes. So you paste. We get the data from download.osgeo.org. And here is where we're going to be using OSM to PU routing. We're going to use the database. Mumbai OSM, we're going to be using the schema roads and we're going to be using the default XML that has um, for all the, the kinds of road because that's the most common thing. Now we're going to go to the workshop to create an XML to import the buildings. So basically you can import anything. If you want to analyze rivers, you can create your own XML and import rivers and make routing with that, make uh, some flow analysis to the rivers. You just need to copy the, comp the configuration. Now, the configuration is going to be based on the kind of building that it is. Uh, it's going to be sparse for buildings that we Emma. expect. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Some noise came out from there. So um, from it's going to be sparse from buildings that do not have any people living in there. It would be like bars, maybe. Uh, it would be, we will have dens, uh, like apartment buildings. So we're going to see what has been installed. We can see the the schema, so we're going to prepare our search path to be roads, buildings, and public. Mm -hmm. So it's set. 
so that we don't have to write everything. So let's see the list of tables that we get. With PG routing, you get the line strings, and we call it ways from the <coughs> OSM to PG routing, and the vertices of those ways. And so you will see that uh, we use a prefix buildings, and in the workshop, there is the exercise 3.2.1.5. You run those uh, queries to verify that you have the same data so that you can follow the workshop and you can keep on going back and checking if you are getting the same results. So we're going to be processing the buildings. What we want to do with them is we want to create a polygon. Uh, this way of creating the buildings is an alternative. Um, we're using PG routing software, OSM to PG routing to import the buildings, but we are creating the polygons. And um, the image that you saw is the same image that you will see on QGIS. This section when using QGIS, it's not on the workshop. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to create a new connection with Mumbai, localhost, 5432, remember the password, the user and the password is user, user. <coughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. So we will load the roads and we will load the buildings, the line strings of the roads and the line strings of the buildings to get the same image that it's on the workshop. So that's the section where we're going to be working. And we want to find the serve roads from a hospital that in this case, it does exist. And so we're going to solve that problem. We copy the text and we're getting the results. But if we want to see the results on the QGIS, we're going to save it into, in this case, into table solution one. We refresh and then we go to solution one. We add it and we can format it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's, I'm too basic, but <laughs> I like it. Okay. Simple blue line. What am I choosing? Red. Okay. There it is. So those were the roads. Now, those roads are connected between themselves. So that was done using writing distance, but we also want the roads that are within that area. Okay, so we're going to be doing that using that query that it's on the workshop and it will give us the solution to we are going to add it and you will see the differences between solution one and solution two Mm 
making it more visible. Blue line. So for the distance that we chose in the workshop, we're adding those edges that are also far from the, are also reachable from the hospital. So to estimate the population, it's um, this is sparse to dense population. And we add the population column and we update it based on our table that we created about what is the amount of population. We're going to use the areas of the buildings now. And we're going to display the population that it's on each building. And of course, that's the estimation. If you have a census data, well, it would be more accurate. Uh, as an economist, I see, I think, well, this is thinking for health, but you can also do some business planning. Like if you have a school and you have this, census data about the population of uh, kids from ages from 10 to, to what's the age for middle school? I was in middle school, 10 to 13, 14 to 18 for high school. Then you can start planning how big your school is needs to be. Or if you want to put a business, you can do so also some um, analysis of the population that you're going to be serving. Okay, so uh, we want to find the total population. And with the exercise 3.4.4, we get, get that number and it's left to the, the students to create a function based on that. So you can work uh, PE routing from GitHub and well, and uh, thanks. That's it. Uh, don't forget to contact me if you need the the mantra. All right. Get an OSUID. Thank you very much, Vicky. Um, I have a couple like PG writing questions for you. And like one of them is we, um, it's very easy to like particularly from a post's point of view to get in the, in the, in the headspace that, uh, that routing is a spatial operation only. Um, but you don't have to read too deep into the PG routing documentation to realize that it's just, it's an abstract concept that can be applied to all sorts of different domains. And I wonder if you could like give us a little tour of some of the like non GIS uses that you've seen people put PG routing to. Well, of course, uh, the PG routing came from routing vehicles, basically. Mm -hmm. That's the original, but uh, basically, it's become a graph solution uh, software, basically. Many problems are NP hard and they can be defined as graphs. And so like, like the problem, it was very interesting the dissection problem for the geometry yeah. that yeah. it's NP hard. It was like, oh my God, if you can find that problem as a graph, then you can see which of the, all these NP hard approximations and solutions that they're, they're approximations, of course, uh, you can use to solve that problem. Also, graph problems, 
many geometry problems are solved with graph algorithms. Yeah. So it's uh, very interesting how everything is interconnected and you use one thing without knowing that you're using it. So yes. Have you seen people like in electricity or utilities? Is that a place you've seen folks use PG routing? Yes. You, uh, um, utilities, the uh, water pipes. There mm -hmm. is uh, many people have approached me about this problem where you have sinks, with you have uh, sources. Right. And you need to close uh, because you're going to fix something. Yes, we have flow functions that you can use to solve that problem. Like, okay, first you find where do you have a bridge. A uh, bridge in a graph is when you have like a big graph and a big graph and there is only one edge. Mm -hmm. So that is a terrible point for when you have a water pipe. So you have to find your bridges. You have to have more connections to not have a, a clog kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So and with the flow functions, well, you're closing here, here, here. You have your sources. Let's go and make the flow and see how it goes it also works for closing roads like i'm going to close this row right there is a flow of vehicles how am i going to divert them to go to the other part it's like i'm i'm really sorry about what happened in california with that mm. bridge that got it's like the perfect example what how would you move your your vehicles there it's a flow there of vehicles and there are many side streets how would you manage to move all that flow to go to the other part to the other side of the bridge and uh, and before I let you go, I've got one personal question. Well, it's not personal; it's personal to me because um, I've been working with PG routing for the past couple of weeks, um, looking at uh, OSM to PG routing, and it seems like quite a powerful loading tool. I'm not sure how powerful it is. So, um, one of the things in like structurally, um, OSM will have nodes um, at points of overpasses, but in a graph, you don't want nodes there. You want the edges to just go past each other. Does does PG routing detect, or sorry, does OSM to PG routing detect these overpass cases and build the graphs appropriately so that the the two lines don't actually come together? Okay, the way that OSM data is a structure. Yeah. Imagine that there is a bridge mm -hmm. and it has a figure like that. They don't put a node intersecting the road that it's under. They don't note it. I thought everything was vertically noted in OSM. No. Oh. No. So there is this node doesn't match this under the, the road that it's under or the bridge that it's above. It doesn't. Oh. So we use the node IDs. We don't use the geometries. We yes. use the node IDs. And because this node has a different ID from this other node, mm -hmm. they don't match. So the bridges become bridges, the tunnels stay. The tunnels, stay yeah, tunnels. everything works. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. That and sounds... we break up every. I, I heard that they were talking about contraction. We mm. break up everything that has more information on the node. So if you have a speed bump, mm -hmm. so there's this row and there is a speed bump, there will be a node here and you will find it. So you need to contract that, otherwise your graph will go 
tremendously big. And for contraction, I think about generating graphs like eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to route from, um, from Alaska to Argentina, so you put a big bunch here and a big bunch here of roads, but you only contract the main highways. You right. don't contract anything else. So you have like this uh, very sparse graph mm -hmm. and very dense graph at, at the end. So I call it the eyeglass graph. Okay. Yeah. But those are dynamic graphs. You, When you're using PG routing many times, you have to do create dynamic graphs, especially for routing, mm -hmm. because it's not the same point of view of a car of, or a trailer. Yep. It's not the same cost to a trailer to make a U-turn. The tires, the wear of the tires when they're heavy and they make a U-turn, it's very expensive, very expensive because there is a lot of friction. And they lose like weeks of life making a U-turn. Hmm. So it's you you see, you you have to look at the map in the eyes of your objective. Right. And if you don't have and if you if your data doesn't have it. Then you go to OSM and start putting it like we did in Chiagase no Mura, that it was an application for elderly people. So they needed to find even the, the slope of the ramps for the wheelchairs. And they needed to mark where the roads with the, these dots for the blind were. And all the details, everything they had to map. So you have to put yourself in in the shoes of the the user. Yes. And the graph changes depending all the time. on your user. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and uh, and talk to us today, Vicky. Thank you. I'm sorry for the coughing. I think sick. Oh no problem. Sometimes things are. Yeah. Things happen. Things happen. Okay. Uh, so. Um...